All right, guys, welcome to the video series that I'm doing with Wayne here. He's going to teach us basically how to do the writing sequence that he does for blacktails. There's not a lot of good information out there, and I know me personally, I've been dying to figure out what he's doing that I'm not. Uh, when it comes to blacktail late season stuff, you seem to got it figured out. Well, today, not so much. <laughs> but, yes, I've, I've had some pretty good success in the past on... Um, and hopefully we'll be able to show you guys what we do and setups and things and you'll be able to pick up something good from it and have more success in the future. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to take you throughout the woods, uh, follow Wayne around with a camera, show you what he does, how he does it, how long he does it, why he does it this way, and kind of just give you a complete tutorial so you can go out there better equipped to go make it happen this year. So we're going to try and film this all today and then bring this footage out to you as soon as as soon as we can because late season started today and uh, we're not out here in camel just to be out here in camel we were actually hunting this morning and uh wayne screwed up my buck this morning on me or else i would have definitely killed it so yeah <laughs> yeah i was asleep in the truck actually while he <laughs> chased a deer and out there in the wide open because <laughs> i can't call him in <laughs> All right. Fair so uh, let's go ahead and uh, what are we going to do first? We're going to go do some rattling or go do some doe bleeds? Yeah, we'll do some rattling and then we'll I'll show you uh, some of the techniques I use when those uh, bucks tighten up with the does and they stand with them. You know, uh, they'll, they'll chase them around. The, the rut is, it, it's, a, it's a marathon. It doesn't happen in just one day. And it goes through different phases, you know. They, they seek, they chase, they stand. Um, you got to be privy to what they're doing and when and set up accordingly and call accordingly otherwise you'll have less success so makes sense so today we have a little bit of a moon right a little bit a little bit of a moon yep uh walk me through what you would do this time of year given the moon and then kind of walk us through the moon phases real quick well one thing about today in particular that i didn't prefer to see was on my way to your house i'm seeing deer it's pitch black and it's a ways before it's daylight and they're up and they're feeding and that's not a good sign. I'd rather see no deer because they're probably bedded. That means they're going to get up later in the day. Um, and the buck that we did see, I mean, it was at first light. He was out with the doe first, right. I mean, just barely breaking light and we haven't seen a deer since. So they're probably bedded up. It's going to get tougher as the days go on. So the moon is coming on to a full moon. It could be good, but by the judge, you know, judging off of what I'm seeing time-wise, they're doing a lot more of their movement in the dark. So what I like to do is hunt after that full moon has gotten to full and it's starting to wane off. Okay. You know, so it's full moon, wait a couple days, and then as it's starting to really taper down, that's when I really want to be out there because I think you're going to have better luck seeing them all throughout the day. Right. You know, and especially... Uh, you know, in the afternoon, I mean, I've had most of my success has been somewhere between 2 and 4.30, you know, right as it's starting to get dark. That's when it's been the best. When guys are going into lunch, I'm going out. Um, the morning can be good, um, but, man, it's really it's really about timing. Like right now, you said you'd been seeing bucks around 9 to 9.30, 9 yeah. somewhere in there. Yep, that can happen, but judging off what we saw today, I don't know. I'm thinking they're laying down by that time, so... You kind of want to, if you can, and if you have the ability to, a lot of us got to work for a living. I understand that, but you want to judge what the deer are doing and what, and, and the time. So if you have cameras, um, you're looking, you're watching those cameras. Oh, I see movement during the day. Now you want to be out there hunting. So if, if it's all nighttime movement, probably not going to do you a whole lot of good. That's save your gas. Save your gas, <laughs> save your, save your energy. Your days off. Yeah. Um, so the weather conditions right now aren't, you know, sunny and partly cloudy. It got to about 35 degrees this morning out here. It wasn't right. super cold. It felt actually warmer than it really was. Yeah. Um, walk us through that. I mean, I would prefer it to be either really cold or raining. Random. Uh, either way. You, you know, it seems like these blacktails really like to move when the rain starts coming in. Right. And, um, and you'll see them in a little bit more open stuff because, and I think it's because it's too noisy in the timber. They can't, you know, they're, they're still skittish. They're, you saw that today. I mean, even though he's in full rut and with a doe, mm -hmm. he was on to you. He was and, nervous. Oh, yeah he, yeah. he didn't like what he saw. 
Right. So, you know, when it's raining, it kind of messes them up a little bit and you'll have more opportunity to probably see more deer movement. Um, but if it's not going to rain, I prefer it to be colder than this all day long. I mean, it's probably 60 degrees right now. Yeah, I could wear a t-shirt out here and right. be just fine. You got to understand, these deer right now, they got hair this long. They don't want nothing to do with this. They're up in that timber. They're in the shade, and they don't want to come out because they're, it, they just get overexerted. They, they chase them does. They run around. Good they enough. may get into a fight. It's warm. It, it, you know, I, I'd prefer it to be much cooler. Good, you know. Good, good to know. So, well, cool. Let's go ahead and uh, and hit this and see what we can find and Sounds and good. go find a thick patch of timber. All right. So, let's do it. Hey guys, so we're out here at Garrett's favorite deer hunting spot that has this many deer in it, but <laughs> we're basically out here just to show you where maybe we would set up if we were wanting to call some late season blacktails. Um, I picked this particular spot right here because it would cover me and my movement since I'm going to be the one using the antlers and making the calls and moving the most. I picked this spot um, because it's kind of a hidey spot and then I would put my hunter up above me because I want to draw these deer downhill towards us. It gives them the advantage and them the thought that maybe they're going to be able to whip whatever they're coming into. So I would set Garrett up higher on the ridge. Not very far. I still need to be able to see him but um, as you can see Basically what I have is 180 degree manzanita cover. Um, so that way when I'm sitting down, I can't necessarily see Garrett. I could see the top of his head, but nothing can see me doing my, my low movements down here. And I will usually turn my back to the shooter so that I can watch behind us. It's so thick. If there was a deer that came up here, he'd be standing on top of you anyway but this is the way I would want to face and then do my rattling. And that way, where they're expected to come from, they wouldn't be able to see me move as much. And it gives me a natural cover that helps, you know, camouflage you better. I mean, camouflage is great, but if I'm standing up here like this, they're gonna see you. They're looking for where that noise is coming from, so I need to do the best I can do to hide myself and try and draw the critter through the shooter. I hope you guys get something out of this. Appreciate it.